The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Mike Cobra, Wheat Specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. I'm in a wheat field today looking at a, a grassy bluegrass species that we're seeing more of across the province in several field crops. There's primarily three species, annual bluegrass, rough stock bluegrass, and Canada bluegrass. Uh, why they're problematic is they all produce a lot of seed and spread that way. The latter two, rough stock bluegrass and Canada bluegrass, uh, have stolen. So these are kind of root stems that run along the surface of the soil. They set out nodes and, and re-root and then they can spread quite easily. So all this to say, uh, populations can build up in a hurry in wheat, in a winter wheat crop like this, uh, Michigan State University has seen as, as much as 50% yield loss from this species being in the field. Uh, also, it comes out in head at the same time that winter wheat does. And so if you're trying to get a, a Fusarium head blight fungicide to hit the, the wheat head, maybe this bluegrass is in the way and obstructing that from doing its job. So, you know, let's focus on this weed, just some quick identification tips first before we look at control options. So in the, the springtime, if you take the leaf blade of the bluegrass and pull it back, uh, at the base of the, the, where the stem and leaf blade meet, you'll see a membranous ligule. So that's one tip. Uh, the seed head itself is a, an open panicle. Um, but if we go back to the leaf blades at their younger stages, they're folded and they actually have a keel shape. So in other words, they bend to the tip. It's kind of very unique. Uh, in this particular field here, we have rough stock bluegrass. The name implies that it's rough and, and certainly if you were to move your hands up and down the leaf and stem of this grass, you'll feel that it's coarse. It's, it's rough to the, the touch. So that's quickly how you identify it, although truthfully, uh, I'm still not great at this, so I end up taking a plant sample, sending it to a diagnostic lab that does DNA testing, costs about $20 a sample, and you know right away. So that's what I actually did here, and I know it's rough stock bluegrass. So there's two things I wanted to learn from this field trial. One was what products work and are effective on bluegrass. That's the most uh, important point. And then the second point is, is does timing matter? Do we need to get them when uh, the, the rough stock bluegrass is really small or do we have some wiggle room? So tackling the first thing, we looked at nine different treatments, three of which that are already available in Ontario when they were applied in mid-April. And here's the key to less than 10 centimeter tall bluegrass. Uh, they gave us excellent control. And so those three products are Axial, Simplicity Go Dry and Vero. Now, you always have to be a little bit careful of environmental conditions at the time of application, but I would say focus on bluegrass stage over environmental conditions. Small is better. The second thing then we learned is because this was in the middle of a farmer's field and they applied Simplicity Go Dry, one of the effective products, almost a month later, we got an opportunity to see how size of bluegrass affected control. And so it is a bit deceiving because if you look at, at the field behind me, what the grower has sprayed, they actually got pretty good control of bluegrass when applying it late, about a month later to bluegrass that was now 20, 30 centimeters tall. Um, so not ideal in terms of staging, but you don't see any above the canopy here. But if you pull back the canopy and look below, there's some pretty huge differences. So, and anything that was effective that I applied mid-April, you look underneath that wheat canopy, there's not a single bluegrass to be found, or very little anyway. Uh, where the farmer applied Simplicity Go Dry a month later to 30 centimeter tall bluegrass, you pull back that canopy and you have 10, 15 centimeter plants that are the odd ones starting to head. So we just suppress growth. We've prevented it from being an eyesore, but we haven't prevented it from setting seed. And so that's the take home from this trial is we got three good tools that we can use and they can be used either in the fall or the spring. And so size of bluegrass matters. So let's focus on that. Um, and because late applications really don't do as nice a job, we have to do everything to make sure that we're scouting those fields and hitting bluegrass when it's less than 10 centimeters tall.